For centuries, we've turned our eyes skyward to observe the stars and galaxies separated from us by incredible distances in space and time. Our nearby neighbors, the planets that form our solar system, were the only worlds known. Until the 1990s, when astronomers detected the first planets around other stars. Now, armed with new technology on the ground and in space, teams of astronomers are racing to be the first to announce the discovery of other Earth-like worlds. Within the next six to 12 months, I suspect, we'll be able to uh, uh, detect and verify and announce uh, planets that at least have the size of our own Earth. They're called exoplanets, and as little as two decades ago, many astronomers were doubtful that any could be found. When I told people in the 1980s that I was going to be begin a search seriously for planets around other stars, uh, my fellow colleagues in the scientific community uh, were embarrassed for me. But in 1995, astronomers measured small oscillations of stars too distant to see with the naked eye, indicating the presence of an orbiting planet. Since then, 500 exoplanets have been discovered, more than half of them by University of California astronomy professor Jeff Marcy. The transformation between then and now is utterly breathtaking. There are thousands of scientists throughout the world who are studying planets around other stars now. This changes our understanding of our role in the universe. We, in some sense, are not alone in terms of it being a planet circulating around a star. We now realize that potentially there could be thousands, billions of planets right in our own backyard, right in our own Milky Way galaxy. This is a game changer. The discovery of such a planet could secure any astronomer's place in the history books and be the first step toward finding other life in the universe. We are going to have an existential shock looking at the night sky, realizing that there, 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 there are Earth-like twins in outer space. And then we're gonna wonder, is anyone looking back? I think it's something everyone can understand. Are there other planets out there that are like Earth, that are like our solar system? What are other solar systems like? Uh, 15 years ago, we didn't even know if there were other solar systems. The ast Astronomy and Astrophysics Decadal Survey uh, identified uh, finding exoplanets, and in particular, finding exoplanets like Earth, as one of the top priorities of our field. The great distances between star systems leave exoplanets too far away to be seen directly. Instead, astronomers point their telescopes at host stars to look for signs of orbiting bodies. Their techniques require incredible precision. The Keck Telescope, stationed on a 14,000-foot-high volcano on Hawaii's Big Island. It's one of the few instruments capable of taking such accurate measurements. We can measure how stars are moving uh, on the order of how quickly a human walks. So as the planet goes around the star, uh, it induces very small motions uh, in the star. It's unfathomable the accuracy that we can now measure these things uh, at. Measuring the intensity of these motions, astronomers can determine the mass of an orbiting planet. This is known as the wobble technique. That's the technique we've used to discover hundreds of these large planets. The problem with that technique, as beautiful and elegant as it is, is that it's not sufficient to find Earths. Most of the exoplanets found so far are quite bizarre. Hot Jupiters, ice giants, lava worlds where it rains molten rock, planets covered in water, methane, diamonds, Worlds where the gravity could crush a person. We've only been able to find the largest, the Jupiters, the Saturns, the Neptunes. Where are the Earths? Are there, in fact, 
lots of Earth-like planets out there orbiting other stars? Or is our Earth somehow a rarity, maybe even unique, in our Milky Way galaxy? And of course, our, our, it's the technology that we had to improve. So in 2009, NASA launched the Kepler Space Telescope, which continuously monitors 100,000 stars looking for planets that block their light. We can't see the planet, but we can sense the presence of the Earth as it blocks and dims the star just the tiniest amount. In fact, it's about a part in 10,000, and Earth is like a speck of dust on a search lamp. They call it the transit method. It allows Kepler to monitor many stars at once and find planet candidates very quickly. The number of candidates Kepler has found after more than a year of searching already exceed the 500 planets discovered over the last 15 years. Roughly 800 uh, stars we have now identified that are quite interesting. Already nine of those 800 candidate stars have been confirmed to harbor planets. And NASA has additional candidates which are being kept secret for now. We sequestered 400 stars back in June uh, for which we did not release the data. And you can bet uh, with, with uh, a sort of a, a wink uh, what uh, lies within those data. Those 400 sequestered stars are uh, small, uh, very well-defined planets that are edging close to Earth-sized planets. But a planet the size of Earth will not necessarily be Earth-like. One key variable is a planet's temperature. An Earth-sized planet too close will be blowtorched by the star. An Earth-sized planet that's too far from the star will, of course, be frigid cold, like Mars with a, a sheet of ice covering it. So your Earth-sized planet has to be in the so-called uh, Goldilocks zone, uh, a distance just right, so that the water is in liquid form. A Goldilocks zone planet, three times the size as Earth. This discovery was the subject of a surprising press conference in September 2010, and it came with a bold claim. Given the uh, ubiquity and propensity of life to flourish wherever it can, um, I would say that uh, my own personal feeling is that the chances of life are on this planet are 100 percent. I have almost no doubt about it. But not all astronomers are convinced that this planet exists. The discovery remains unconfirmed. Hoping to prevent a similar controversy, NASA requires a painstaking verification process for Kepler candidates, requiring three transits and a confirmation from Keck. A planet orbiting as far from its star as Earth will take three years to fulfill this criteria. It's even possible that one of the sequestered stars harbors such a planet and is waiting for NASA's verification before its release. But even such a world with the correct temperature and size could still be very different from Earth. Our own Earth, with its special attributes of size, chemical composition, temperature, a stabilizing moon, just the right amount of water as a veneer on the surface that allows the continents uh, to poke out, those planets may be a rarity. There might be, uh, it might be one in a million in the Milky Way galaxy. Might, might even be one in a billion. Or it could be that Earth-like planets are a dime a dozen in the Milky Way. That's the goal of the Kepler mission, to find out whether our own Earth has common brethren uh, within the universe. Kepler targets less than a millionth of the stars in our galaxy. If it locates an Earth-like planet in the next few years, that could imply that such planets are common, planets which could harbor life. Astrobiologists looking for otherworldly organisms here on Earth are finding microbes that can thrive in deadly conditions. One such organism, GFAJ1, was the subject of a recent announcement by NASA. Its discoverers say it has some alien properties. 
the ability to form DNA molecules using arsenic in the place of phosphorus. The results are still heavily debated in the scientific community, but if confirmed, they raise the possibility that life among the stars could be stranger than any scientist may be able to imagine. Well, the $64 million question, of course, is whether or not there is other intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. Uh, and I got to tell you, the answer is definitely yes. And that sounds cocky, it sounds arrogant, maybe even misguided. But here's the math. If intelligent life is a one in a million throw of the dice in a cosmic sense, one out of a million stars is lucky enough to have a planet inhabited by an intelligent civilization, then our galaxy with its 200 billion stars has thousands of advanced technological civilizations. And I do mean advanced and I do mean technological. Technological in the sense that they use electronics and tools to build rocket ships and radio telescopes and advanced in the sense that they probably have been around for hundreds or thousands or even millions of years longer than we humans have had technology. But if that's an op optimistic estimate, then you can call upon the hundreds of billions of galaxies out there. And surely, even if intelligent life is a one in a billion throw of the dice, there are still millions of advanced uh, species, technological intelligent species out there, just because of the sheer numbers of sun-like stars in our entire universe. I think it's inevitable that we're going to find another intelligent civilization in outer space. Get used to it. Because the galaxy is so huge, and there are so many different Goldilocks zones, so many different stars within various Goldilocks zones, and so the probability is enormous that at some point we're going to have microbial life getting off the ground, and a fraction of those planets are going to have advanced civilizations. But don't expect an episode of Star Trek just yet. The distances between Earth and the relatively close by Kepler planets could not be reached by our radio signals for hundreds or thousands of years. Some people say, once we've logged on to an Earth-like planet, let's go visit. Well, <laughs> I hate to be the party pooper, but these planets are hundreds, thousands of light years distant. And for our puny civilization that can barely whip around our own Earth at 18,000 miles per hour, the very idea of going to these distant planets is preposterous. It means that perhaps maybe in 100 years, 200 years, we may be able to send the first probes to the nearby stars. So the best we can do is to analyze the starlight coming from the star and from then the planets to find out what the composition of the atmosphere is. Next, to listen to any kinds of radio emissions from these planets. But beyond that, it's science fiction. SETI, an organization dedicated to finding extraterrestrial life in outer space, has listened to the heavens for decades for radio signals from far away civilizations. So far, they have found no signs of other intelligences. Even so, it's not likely to stop Marcy and his fellow astronomers from searching for other worlds that resemble home. We are in fact taking our first steps out into the galaxy. Uh, exploring the galaxy, hoping to find our roots chemically and biologically among the stars. For the Wall Street Journal Digital Network, I'm Michael Kofsky.